Let me tell you something, brother. You think, frankly, that's the way I think about it. One verse that said, if you don't like him, kill him. I really wish I could find it. I was able to buy a beautiful Cessna Citation jet, cash. A few months later, bought another jet worth three times what that one was. A little bit later, bought a third jet. The Jesuit priests have been infiltrating every institution and they're ready now for a takeover. I want you to pay close attention to this first uh, person that we're going to interview. He's an ex-Jesuit priest and he tells you about the, um, the, the infiltration by the Jesuits. A special I work um, in dealing with the infiltration of churches and religious institutions as well as government uh, that, that cover a tremendous uh, number of institutions. And the purpose of that infiltration was what for? Well, the purpose is what the Roman Catholic system has all the time as, a, as her own purpose, is to infiltrate, to penetrate all the areas of life where the Roman Catholic can have control and access for the coming world government. What that means is in preparation for that world government, the Roman Catholic institution, especially since the establishment of the Jesuit order in 1541, throughout all these 500 years, they've been in preparation and in, in, in through infiltration and penetration of every uh, level uh, of society, in order to uh, take over uh, the world uh, politically and religiously. There are two doctrines that define very well these, uh, these dangerous goals of the Roman Catholic institution. Two doctrines uh, define this very well. One is called the doctrine of the apostolic succession, and that is dealing with the papacy. And the other is the doctrine the temporal power and that is dealing with world government. Of course both, because you can see that even the Pope and his own individual office, he meet those requirements. Uh, he is not only the head of his church, as he called himself, John Paul II, the present Pope, he said he is the pastor of his church. He is not only that, uh, but he is the head of his estate, of his of his country, but that means he is the head of a political state. Both combinations are in one office there. In, poli in prophetically speaking, that is what we see in the book of Revelation. Uh, uh, the political power always hand to hand with the religious power.
when I was in detective work in Washington, D.C. during World War II, I was going home to Alexandria, Virginia from Washington, D.C., and when I got to the mall, there was two scholars, and they were sticking up their fingers for a ride. I said, I'll just pick them up and put them in the back seat and see what I can find out from them. And so when they got in the back seat and was seated, I asked them, I said, you boys are from Georgetown University taking the priesthood, aren't you? No, we're not taking the priesthood, they said. Oh, I said, you're scholars from Georgetown University taking something. What are you taking? <coughs> they said, we're Anglican brothers. Oh, I said, I've never, the church has never told us what Anglican brothers are, nor uh, much about them, and I don't know much about them. What uh, do Anglican brothers do, and what are they for? They said, well, we're taking uh, studies to uh, work with the Protestant churches and get them to come in to the, do what the church wants them to do and to work with them and work with us. And uh, I said, well, how many of you folks are taking the course? We said, well, about 780. And uh, I said, how many graduates? Oh, some heard between 780 and 700 and 800. Uh, no, 700 and, uh, and 780. I said, uh, no. Uh, uh, how many graduated last year? And they told me. And then I said the year before that, and they told me. And I went back to, we had about 3,800 people graduated out in the field. And I said, well, what do you boys do when you go out in the field? No, I said, at first I want to know uh, uh, how, how many graduate next year. Well, it said it'll be somewhere under 900 anyway. And I said, how, how about... Uh, what do you do when you uh, graduate? said, well, the first thing, we change our names. And when we change our names, then we're allocated so many to this church, so many to that church, and to another church. And I said, when you go out to the churches, then what do you do? He said, well, the first thing we do is look around for some nice young lady that we'd like to make an associate member uh, with, and then uh, we marry them. And after we're married, we go off to a a Protestant uh, theological seminary or school, and we come out a Protestant minister. Then we're taught to, in our course, to work up to the heads as fast as we can in that line, and um, where we're supposed to work in. And uh, I said, now, uh, do all of you work in the same field? No, says some of us work, but we all work in the church trying to get the churches to unite with us and do what they want us, we want them to do. So were these Roman Catholic uh, students then? They were, as far as I learned, from what I learned, they were Jesuits. our hearts as desperately wicked. And in Matthew 15, 8, Jesus said that our hearts are far from God. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me.